In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You know where he was headed, don't you? Jesus. <laughs> in the story right after this one in Mark's Gospel, we see Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. You know, Palm Sunday? <laughs> he is, in this story, leaving Jericho and has about an eight-hour walk ahead of him. And we hear that he is surrounded by his disciples and a crowd. He has to be thinking as he's walking, like thinking about the days ahead, planning, praying, knowing that with just a handful of days left, he still has so much to teach. He's thinking about this, the symbolism of, of choosing to ride a donkey into Jerusalem, thinking about visiting the temple once he gets there, knowing that Passover is coming, thinking about the, the bread and the wine, and planning all of it. And all around him is this crowd, and they are excited. They are walking with him to Jerusalem, and they're thinking, this is it. He's the Messiah. He's the one who is going to restore Israel to greatness and overthrow the Romans. War is coming. There's a buzz in the air, kind of an expectant electricity. And this is the scene that we have as they are walking together, this sort of chaos. And then Jesus stops. He hears something, raises a hand, and the crowd gets quiet. He hears it again. Son of David, have mercy on me. This gospel convicts me deeply. Why? <laughs> because I'm a planner. <laughs> When I get to the office, first thing Monday morning, I have my coffee and I make my list. I make a list of everything that needs to get done that week. I have things to do. There is nothing more satisfying than marking something off my list. Sometimes I will even start my list with make a list, just so I can cross that off when I'm done. And then if I do something that's not on my list, I will put it on my list just so I can cross it off. Nothing feels better or more productive. And then an interruption happens. Someone needs to talk. Someone's in the hospital. Maybe one of the Tom's helpers wants to tell me a story. And just for an instant, I think, ah, my list. I, I have stuff to do. I, I have to get this email out. I, I have to update the database. But I know in my heart, when I let go, when I let go of the need for productivity, I know, I know because of stories like this one in our gospel today, I know that that email can wait. The database doesn't really matter. When in the middle of the frenzy of doing things, accomplishing things, being productive, I stop and listen, that's what matters. That is when relationships and connection happens. When I get to go and sit and meet Christ in another person, that's the good stuff. That's why I got into ministry in the first place. Not because of emails. <laughs> It's very hard for us to let go of our need for productivity. When we get things done, it feeds our 
need to feel successful, that our work matters, that we are competent at what we do, and even that we matter. I remember so vividly in the craziness of raising young children. Oh my gosh, so much frenzy. It was very easy to get lost in the doing of things. Driving to soccer, cleaning the house, homework, doctor's appointments, church, dinner, bath time, all the tasks. And then in all of that hurried frenzy, Asher literally wants to stop and smell the flowers. <laughs> Dude, we're late. We got to go. It was so easy to forget, to connect and enjoy these beautiful little people in front of me. When we go to work, when we go to the grocery store or the dentist or church, so many opportunities to encounter Jesus. Beautiful, divine moments. And so often we miss it because of the roar of the crowd of voices in our head. Then Jesus does something very interesting when the blind man comes to him. Did you catch it? A man is standing before Jesus, who is blind, and Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? He's blind. <laughs> Mightn't one, one assume that he wants to see? And also, it's Jesus. He already knows this man. He knows his heart. He knows his deepest desires. Heck, Jesus knew the entire life story of the woman at the well. He already knows what this man wants. But he does not presume. He gives the man the dignity to share with him what his needs are. Jesus lets this man open his heart to him and share his desire, and Jesus listens. Jesus, at this moment, is arguably in one of the most focused, intense, and potentially stressful moments of his life and ministry as he foresees and plans his final days. But he does not, in all of that intensity, he does not allow himself to be absorbed in the tasks at hand. He stops and he listens. He allows interruption and is fully present to this man. Now, why would this reading come up during stewardship season. It doesn't have directly anything to do with money, or it doesn't seem like it would fit in a stewardship season, but in fact, this story speaks directly to the stewardship of our days. The stewardship of our days. How do we spend our time here on earth? Are we lost in the need for productivity? The need to prove that we matter because we are accomplished or we have accomplished something? That need is very seductive. Stephen Covey, the great businessman and motivational speaker, he wrote the seminal book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He wrote, the key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. And, and there's merit to that. He was an advocate for intentionally scheduling time for the things that mattered, time with family, time to work on your faith, time to work on your hobbies and those things that give you joy. And that is a fine idea. But 
don't underestimate the power of interruption. The person who pokes their head into your office to say, hey, and maybe share a joke. Or the child that you're trying to wrangle into the car seat who is patting your cheeks and saying that they love you and that you have wrinkles. <laughs> or the person that you see on the street who is asking for a little help. Or the checkout person at Quick Trip. Each one of those is a chance to encounter Jesus. One of the greatest gifts that Jesus teaches us is the gift of stopping. The gift of stopping what we are doing and being fully present to what is right in front of us. Being present to who is in front of us. Really listening. Connecting. Taking delight in the divine that is in them. Just stop. Amen.